everyone, and welcome back to the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. This is the edition for Wednesday evening, the final day of May in 2023. May 31st, of course, a very familiar date to longtime Valley residents because of what happened this evening, early this evening, on May 31st, 1985. Usually around this time of the year, we uh, look back at what happened that day. I like to think of it as a generational tornado outbreak, probably the most important weather event in our modern history in our part of the country. Uh, now, of course, the most infamous tornado, the F5, that uh, devastated parts of Niles and uh, continued into Mercer County over towards the Wheatland area. Um, but there were a lot of tornadoes that day in, in Northeast Ohio and Western PA, including an F2 in Northern Columbiana County that lifted for a while, then dropped back down as an F3, uh, did some F3 damage in, in Northern parts of Beaver County, PA. We also had a strong tornado in Northwestern Trumbull County, a very strong tornado occurred near the Crawford-Mercer County line, and we had several tornadoes up in Ashtabula and Crawford County on this date back in 1985. When we look at all the tornadoes in Trumbull County in particular, you know, it always kind of stands out to me that the I-80 corridor is a very busy spot for tornadoes, with fewer tornadoes off to the north. Now, there's no good reason for this other than just hap happenstance. Um, there's no ge geographical thing or anything like that that... Uh, makes it more likely to see tornadic activity in southern Trumbull County as, oppo as opposed to a northern parts of the county. But it is interesting how many tornadoes we've had around that I-80 corridor in the last several decades. In Ohio, uh, especially in northern and central Ohio, the severe weather season and tornado season does tend to kind of peak or crescendo in late May, June, and very early in July before... Uh, the chances of severe weather tend to decrease later in the uh, summer. Uh, now, of course, it's been a very quiet season so far in general severe weather terms, and of course, uh, no tornadoes in our area so far this season. We hope it stays that way. While we're on the subject of tornadoes, just a quick reminder of how a tornado forms some basic science here. It's all about wind shear, changing of the wind direction and or the wind speed with height through the atmosphere. So sometimes you have s winds near the surface blowing from one direction, up above our heads several thousand feet, they may be blowing from a different direction. Even if they're blowing in the same direction, if the wind is a lot stronger up here than it is down here, that can still create uh, what we call directional shear, and you can get a horizontal, ro horizontally rotating column of air. Now that in and of itself is no big deal. The bigger deal comes though if you get some strong thunderstorm updrafts that tilt that rotating column of air into the vertical. And this is when we might run into some problems. We have that vertical rotation now and sometimes uh, that manifests itself in a lowering of the cloud base it's a wall cloud not every wall cloud produces a tornado but some of them do oftentimes a precursor to, to a tornado is what's known as a wall cloud a rotating a column of air if it doesn't quite reach the ground a funnel cloud forms so sometimes a funnel comes out of the wall cloud but doesn't come all the way to the ground that's a funnel cloud a rotation that makes it all the way down to the surface of course that is a tornado. All right, looking ahead to the month of June, back here in 2023, uh, the Climate Prediction Center, part of the National Weather Service, put out their updated monthly outlooks today. Now, odds are favoring that June comes out in the wash as drier than the average. That being said, this may be heavily impact or influenced, I should say, by the first week of the month, which looks very, very dry. I'm expecting a more active pattern. Maybe not super wet, but at least more active, at least more seasonably wet as we go into the second week of June and beyond, but the first week is certainly looking like a dry affair. Odds are favoring a warmer than average month, temperature-wise. I don't expect a lot of extremes in the month of June, and you may be looking at this map and wondering why this is when we're expecting not so hot of a summer. Well, don't forget, summer's three months long, June, July, and August. And uh, a warm June does not necessarily mean the whole summer will, will turn out that way. And again, I don't think it's warm by a huge margin in the month of June. Speaking of June, uh, this is the month that uh, we typically start to get a little bit of a break from the tree pollen as the greening up of things is reaching its conclusion as we speak. Um, but grass pollen and eventually weed pollen kind of take the wheel, if you will, as far as the main allergens in the air as we head deeper into the summer season. Well, in the short term, what you see is what you get. We've been talking about this all week, just more sunny days tomorrow and Friday. Uh, warm temperatures, downright hot, but not humid. Dew points will be in check. Uh, we're dry through Friday and Friday night. What we have done today with the forecast is on Saturday, we have inserted a small chance of a shower or a thunderstorm in the forecast for Saturday afternoon with that backdoor front 
coming out of eastern Canada and kind of swooping south and southwest. There's going to be a modest cool down with that front, so we go from the middle and upper 80s to about 80 or so for daytime highs Sunday and Monday. Isolated shower or storm Saturday afternoon, maybe very early Saturday evening. Most of us won't see that, though. Most of us will stay dry, it looks like, through at least the middle of next week. In fact, we might stay dry until next Friday, June the 9th. Wouldn't guarantee that at this point, but it's on the table that we reach 19 consecutive days of dry weather. I put on social media earlier the list of longest dry stretches in uh, recorded history for our area. A lot of those dates, not all of them, but a lot of them are in the fall season. August and especially September, October, it's much less common to have a streak of that magnitude or of that length of dry weather in the spring season. It ha it's happened, but it doesn't happen very often. It's much more common later in the summer season and especially into early fall. All right, coming up on Thursday, the first day of June, Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll take another look at that weekend rain chance. It should remain minuscule. And we'll talk more about next week and signs of a change as we go into the second week of June and beyond. That's coming up on Thursday on the Valley's Most In-Depth Weather Forecast video. Thanks for watching tonight, and have a great rest of your Wednesday.